behind for the coastline of West Wales. Of all the walks in Wales, there's none more famous than the Pembrokeshire Coast Path. But less well-known, perhaps, are the welcoming towns and villages nearby, like St Dog Mills, just a stone's throw from the path and where we start our walk today. My guide for this walk is a lady with a wonderful name. When Anne Catebread isn't out walking her three whippets, she's a very busy bee who not only keeps a B and b but also runs a graphic design company. And she's put her skills to good use in helping to produce a new map of the many fabulous walks in the area. Morning, Anne. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and you. Shamai. Diane. <laughs> Here's your map. Thank you. Uh, we better go, haven't we? Right. Sorted the weather out for us. Oh, yeah, you've done a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a change. Yeah. <laughs> Just inside Pembrokeshire's border with Ceredigion, our route begins by winding its way through charming and historic St Dogmills to reach the banks of the Tavy Estuary, which we follow downstream to Poppet Sands. From the beach, we climb steeply onto Chemice Head and along dramatic cliffs, then turn inland to the tiny hamlet of Kippin in time to catch the bus back to St Dogmills, having walked nearly seven sensational miles. This stone here and these buildings are just are unique to St Dogmills and Cardigan. They've got the band of slate and then they've got the sandstone. And the slate banding is because they had very shallow foundations. Um, and this then it takes the weight through the whole building. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. It's, uh, it's very different and well, it's very attractive in its own way. Isn't yeah, it? it's really beautiful, isn't it? The only thing was they actually took the stone to build some of the houses in the village from the abbey. Surprised they got away with that. I know. The town takes its name from Dogmill, a 6th century Christian saint said to have been the cousin of St David. The impressive ruins here are of a Norman abbey established in 1120, which was a spiritual and cultural powerhouse and famed for its impressive library. For a village the size of St Dog Mills, it's uh, actually a large abbey. It is. It's actually um, an offshoot of the Benedictine ch um, church and abbey in France. So it was Tyrannese um, monks came over and then they set up an abbey here and then later this larger abbey was actually built on the same site. And the other thing that's quite interesting as well is the whole of the village was an orchard for the abbey, which is... and so... and there was a really famous cider that they all drank here. So... Here, the stage that's been set up, that's for the Abbey Shakespeare players. And they, the first week in um, August each year, they put on a Shakespeare play here. The village comes out, brings a picnic, everyone sits down. And last year they did um, Midsummer Night's Dream, which is fantastic because they lit it, so the shadow, it was almost like huge shadow puppets on the trees behind. And this year they're doing The Merchant of Venice. Must be quite a spectacle. It is. Great drama in a dramatic location. Just going to pray for good weather. Oh, yes. If you can help us with that, that would be great. <laughs> so this now is the infirmary. And again, this is one of the best places to show you the kind of the, the banding of the uh, stone, which we saw in the houses, and see that kind of how clever the whole engineering was that the monks came up with in order to take these huge, huge ceilings and roofs with hardly any foundations. Must have been impressive in its day. Oh, definitely. I mean, it really would have had that huge impact. So what's happening here? Looks like a bit of a market. Yeah, it's actually the um, weekly farmers, um, local producers market, and there's loads of um, businesses that have started up because of this market. And um, it's a great place to get all local produce, um, food and all sorts. They sell any cake? They do sell cake. So we've got a range of stalls, we've got locally made jam. Um, we actually had a guest in the B&B who couriered 52 jars back to uh, London for a private members club. And then one of the big highlights as well is Mandy, who lives a couple of doors down from us. Her husband's actually the local, and her son are the local fishermen. And they go out in the coracle at night, catching suet. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Lots of sunshine on it, <laughs> just a few clouds, light northeasterly breeze. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, 
That's really nice. Thank you. That'll keep me going for the rest of the day. <laughs> So here we have the village watermill. A velin. A velin. And it's actually a working watermill. Blimey, there uh, can't be many of those in Wales. No, I don't think there are. And the nice thing about this is you can actually buy the uh, flour that the miller mills. And the fabulous Baker Brothers, they recommend using it um, for a pizza dough and in ciabatta bread. They do a tour around the mill. You can go round or we can get on our way. I think we should. <laughs> yes. I'll have to come back another day. OK. There's so much to do in this village. There is, isn't there? So here we are. This is the Tyve Estuary. Beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? And so close to the village. Yes, yes. We've just come down from the mill. Um, just down there, that's Cardigan. Only 20-minute walk. It's a great spot. Yeah, so if we head on up, and we can get to Poppet Sand soon. So you wouldn't believe it, but um, this area here was once absolutely rammed with boats. It actually had more boats than Cardiff, and it rivalled, Cardigan rivalled as a port. At Liverpool, they were deciding between Cardigan and Liverpool which was going to be the most important port. In the early 1800s, there were seven times as many ships registered here as there were in Cardiff. Goods were imported and exported to and from all corners of the world. But the silting up of the estuary and the arrival of the railway in 1886, which meant the goods could be transported quicker by train, led to the rapid decline of the port. These are unusual. What are these wooden posts sticking out of the ground? Ah, now these are staves, and now all of these, this whole area would have been covered with staves like this, and they were for drying the fishermen's nets. They used to do the seine fishing where they threw the nets out, where there were four people, and then they'd pull in um, salmon and sewing. And then the pub here, if we carry on, that pub is where the fishermen would go before they went out fishing. They'd actually draw lots to see who fished where. Below the main path is a large boulder, known as the Blessing Stone, believed to be the capstone of the Neolithic burial chamber. In Welsh, it's known as Carrick Ateb, an echo stone. Something you should do before you walk is to say hello to the river spirits from here. <laughs> so you go first. I'll go first, OK. Hello! I can do better than that. Hello! Do you think they heard me? I think you deafened them. <laughs> Come on. Let's carry on. This plinth here, this is the official start of the Pembrokeshire Coast Path. Uh, 186 miles to Amroth. And you start it with the first step, which you take here. Like this. And you're off. Keep going? <laughs> yeah, to pop its hands. The next section of our route follows the road, so we need to take care. Near a pop its hands, it is possible to avoid the road, but check your tie tables beforehand. So, this route you can only actually do when it's low tide because the stones flood. So it's not a high tide route, and the stones were put in by the St Dogmore's footpath group. Chanting. Ah, so this is Poppet Sands. It is. <laughs> nice beach. And the River Tavy, quite narrow at the moment because the tide's low. Yes, it is, so you won't see any of the boats going in and out now. But what we do see are lots of runners. Come on, number 291, faster! <laughs> Local youngsters doing the beach version of cross-country running. Faster! Come on! Faster! I think I'll stick to walking. Thank you very much. So, this is the new lifeboat station. It was built in 1972, and they um, have an Atlantic 85, which is a boat that was designed by students in Atlantic College. And it made history because in uh, 2011, it was the first all-female crew went out on a call-out. I bet they kept busy in the summer. Really busy. They used to come in from fishing and then you'd hear them running down through the back garden and they'd be going out on the rescue. 
We now head around the rocks and across the wide expanse of beach towards the old lifeboat station. The tide does come in quickly here, so this bit is not for dawdling. So this is the site of the first Cardigan lifeboat station. It was first built in 1849 and then this building was actually built in 18. 76 and then controversially it was closed in uh, 1932 and there wasn't a lifeboat station at all so if there was a rescue they had to come from Fishguard or they had to come down from Aberystwyth so luckily the other station was built in 1971 So this is Penryn Castle. Um, the owners of this own the uh, lifeboat station. It doesn't look much like a castle. It doesn't. It did have a um, castellated roof, but they've actually changed it all. It was taken over by the Admiralty, and it was used as a kind of an outpost when the, when the um, uh, cardigan was really, really busy port. Um, but now it's a private home, and what's really nice is what we've just come up is a permissive path, and they've given permission for walkers like ourselves to go through their land. Um, so now we're going to carry on up the permissive path and we're going to head up to Camus Head. OK. OK. Across the bay we can see Cardigan Island. And although it's now a nature reserve, it's still waiting for the return of an iconic bird. Now, Cardigan Island used to have puffins on it. And um, unfortunately, in 1934, the um, SS Herefordshire was being towed it broke free and crashed into the island. Um, rats on board jumped onto the island and killed all the puff puffin population. But luckily, now they've actually managed to get rid of all the rats. And hopefully in a few years' time, we should have puffin back on Cardigan Island. That would be great, wouldn't it? It would be excellent. Because at the moment, most of the puffin col colony is on Skoma, isn't it? Yes, it is. Looks like Dinner's head is disappearing into the mist. It's raining on the way. Well, hopefully, with the microclimb around here, it'll stay away from us. At 167 metres, Chemice Head is the highest sea cliff in Wales. The inaccessible pebbly beach below is an important breeding site for the largest Atlantic grey seal, with lots of pups born here from late August to December. So, the Pembrokeshire coast path continues this way, but we're going to go inland via Kippin back to St Dogmalls, but we're going to go part way walking inland, and then we're going to catch the Poppet Rocket Bus, which is a special bus through the summer months for walkers and it's great you just on the road if you see it put your hand out bus will stop for you and then you can take us back to some dog balls pop it rocket pop it rocket is. does it go fast it does <laughs> <laughs> and if you were expecting to find accommodation at kipping well it really is just a tiny hamlet and a place where the bus stops so there we are having scratched the surface sampled a segment of this breathtaking coast path I think I'm ready now to head back to St Dogmills for a few more treats from the farmer's market. And we have a rocket to catch. Hello. 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 <laughs> And that was the last in the current series, but you can catch up with all four episodes of Weatherman Walking on the BBC iPlayer now.